This is a modular toy truck system. It's got a trailer that hitches on the back and a bunch of building blocks that it can carry around. The trailer comes off and can be replaced by this little carrier here, which also holds blocks or whatever else you want to put in there. And finally, in case you want to go camping, it's got a camper on there. But the best part is I was able to make all of this using a single two by four stud. One thing I want to point out when you're buying two by fours to use for projects like this is get the ones that are labeled KDHT. That means it's kiln dried and heat treated. You'll notice because they'll be a little bit lighter than the green ones, which are really wet and really hard to work with. And then they'll shrink and cause all sorts of problems for small projects like this. So basically you just want to get the driest board you could find. I want to start by laminating together three pieces of this to make up the camper and the truck. And what I mean by laminating these together is just gluing the faces of all three of these together to form one big block. And the only important thing here is to look for the the nicest faces and keep those on the outside and put all the ugliness on the inside. So words to live by. This is Tight Bond 2 wood glue. When you're laminating boards together like this, the most important thing is that you've got that glue covering all of it. Don't leave any gaps. Mostly I just want to crank these down as tight as I can. And there it is, one big beefy chunk of wood. Now I'll square these up and trim them down a little bit. And there's the two blocks cut down to their rough size. This is for the truck and then the, the camper that's gonna go on the back. If you, if you have very imaginative children, they, you could probably just stop right there. Just let them play. But for all other kids, I've made up a template here that you can glue onto the sides of these and cut them out. I attach these templates using a spray adhesive. And if you'd like to make this project, you can download a full set of plans, including the templates over at shopwwmm.com. A long time ago, a viewer to the show sent me this spindle sander, and I, I wasn't sure if I really needed one, but I've had it so many years now that I just love it. And so basically having both of these tools, the disc sander on the flip side and then the spindle sander, I'm able to sand inside curves using the spindle and then the outside curves using the disc sander. I'm gonna make a mark in the center of this circle where I wanna drill the hole. I'm using a round over bit in my router to soften all the sharp edges. I'll drill a hole in the camper that I can glue a dowel into. Then I'll drill a hole in the bed of the truck that everything can attach to. I'm sanding out the inside of this hole on the truck just to make it a little bit bigger so that all of these hitches drop down in it pretty easily. I don't want them to get stuck in there. I also think it's good to probably soften over this edge so that it's easier to just guide in there. You 
You know what? I'm gonna move this back into the shop so it's not so blindingly bright. There. Oh, you just name another YouTuber that'll go that extra mile for you. I'm gonna make the trailer using half inch wood, which means I need to resaw this into half inch pieces, which is why I've set my rip fence here a half inch from the blade. What I wanna do though is set up this feather board. This is my homemade feather board. I have free plans for this, by the way, over at myshopjigs.com. There's a whole bunch of shop jigs you can download over there. Uh, anyways, I want that to provide some pressure against the side of this board just to keep it up against the fence so it won't tip over. You can also download plans for this sacrificial push block which is really handy for just this use because I can run it right over the blade and it's got a cleat in the back here to help me push the stock through the blade. What I want to do is cut out all of the pieces for the trailer and the truck bed all at the same time. I've set up a stack of dado blades in my table saw along with a sacrificial fence so that I can cut out rabbits along the edges of these pieces. I don't want to round over these edges using my router. I just want to ease them over a little bit using my sander so they're, they're not so sharp. I'm trying to drill this hole through so that it doesn't come through the other side so I won't have to sand off a dowel there. That looks like about a quarter inch there. I think I can go a little bit deeper. Look at that. These slots are for the axles. And I cut out this block here with a couple of slots for the back wheels of the trailer. I'll just glue it into place. It can be a little tricky resawing wood this thin on the table saw. You might want to try the band saw. Or if you're uncomfortable with either of those, just get a thin piece of plywood and use that instead. Okay, time for some real talk. We need to talk about wheels. Toy wheels are just one of those things where I just think it just makes more sense to just buy. These are uh, inch and a quarter wheels. They have a little quarter inch hole already in them. You can get a package of these real inexpensively on Amazon. I mean, sure, you could make your own wheels if you have a lathe, but even then, that's gonna take a fair amount of effort to get them all to match and look like this. It's just one of those things I think Spare yourself the trouble and just, just buy a package of wheels. I cut out these dowel pieces to use for the axles. And one of the drawbacks to using store-bought dowels and store-bought wheels is that they might not make for a good fit. I would rather have a tight, tighter fit on this one rather than the wheel spinning on that axle. That's probably why that hole is slightly bigger is because they assume that you're gonna want the wheel itself to spin, but in this case, what I want is the whole axle to spin. So I want these wheels glued on the ends of the axles. Now, if it's not a tight fit, wood glue won't hold that very well. So if there are any gaps here, and if you've got a really loose fitting wheel, use epoxy. Epoxy will fill in that space and make it really strong. Another thing to consider is that buy the wheels first and then go to the hardware store or home center and 
by the dowels. Take some of the wheels with you and just test out some of the dowels because there's actually quite a bit of variation on the different types of dowels that you buy. This is a two part, five minute epoxy. It dries really fast, so just mix up a little bit at a time. So I'm just gonna set it in here so that I can see how far in to press the wheel. So obviously you want the two wheels to have a little bit of a gap between this block and the wheel itself so that there's no friction. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, something like that will work. So I can just remove this and just let that dry. There, and then just save whatever's left and you can make an epoxy river table with it. These will all drop down into those slots like that. And then these thin plates are gonna get glued on like so. But first I need to paint everything. Time for Real Talk part two. We need to talk about paint. The biggest concern people have when they're making toys is, is the paint safe for children? If children are like eating the toys, is it, is it gonna harm them in any way? And I've done a fair amount of research on this and basically all modern paints are safe to use around children. Obviously you don't want them to be breathing the paint when you're spraying it, but modern spray paints and other types of paints don't have lead in them. And that was really the big concern historically. So. I think that if children are chewing on uh, on the toys, you might want to stop them. But I, I don't think that even if they, even if small bits of the paint flaked off, I don't think it's going to be enough to harm them. And seriously, what truck wouldn't be better with purple wheels? Real quick spray painting tip. After you've sprayed on a couple of coats of paint, let it dry overnight, and then hit the entire piece with like 320 or 220 grit sandpaper, a fine sandpaper, and just smooth it all out, and then apply the final coat. That will make the entire finish really nice and smooth. And believe it or not, after all of that, I still have a little over two feet of that two by four left as well as some other scraps. So what I can do is cut this up into some building blocks that the truck can carry around. I ended up with 24 of these blocks. Now I just gotta spend some time softening over all their sharp edges. So to glue these plates in place, I'm gonna use this weld bond glue. It works really well on painted surfaces where wood glue won't hold as well. The main thing here is I just wanna make sure that I don't get the glue on those axles. 